picking up where we left off. Alright, it's going to be American Ninja. Now, Michael Dulikoff was a big time action star in the 1980s. Um, and he did three movies. Now, he's a prime example of somebody that does not have a martial arts background. And when he became an actor, he did two, maybe one martial arts movie before he did American Ninja. So he had prior martial art experience, and then he did the American Ninja 1 and 2, and then he disappeared for about three and a half years. Then he came back and did a third one. Now, this was in the mid-80s where they were trying to do ninja films, and this was pretty good because it kind of solidified um, martial art films in the 80s were now starting to get more respect and more credit where if you look in the 60s, the 70s, and some part of the early 80s, nobody really had any respect or credit for the martial arts. It wasn't until the 80s, you know, and he got to be a big star. Think about it. There were so many guys in the 80s that they could have picked and chose to play American Ninja. The idea that you're an American and someone teach you martial arts, I don't want to ruin it for no one, but it's like 25 years later, when he looks back on those experiences, people ask him what was the best part of those movies, and he said getting to know the culture. It also had a strong, powerful, profound effect on him. And if it weren't for the alcohol, the drugs, and the fame, he probably would have been in all five films. There's a total of five films. Now, that's one franchise that does need to get a reboot. You can make it into a movie, a television series. Look how long since it's been... An American Ninja reboot. Now there have been movies that came after with ninjas in it, but there has not been an American Ninja reboot. You could take someone like Chris Hinesworth or Lane's Hinesworth if you need to rejump their acting career. Like Lane's Hinesworth, the younger brother of Chris Hinesworth. Nobody's really, nobody's really. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Nobody's really um doing anything with them since Hunger Games. So that's how I would look at it. The next one is going to be Wesley Snipes and Blade. Now, Wesley Snipes was doing martial arts before anybody knew he could do martial arts. You know, he went from doing music videos to getting small parts in movies and television to becoming a bona fide action star in movies like Passenger 57, Drop Zone, Demolition Man is where we got to see him display a lot of his martial arts. To be on camera and to match um, skill in his range of acting with Sylvester Stallone. And then it's been confirmed they're going to make a Demolition Man Part 2. Now will his character come back as a clone or another version of himself? We don't know. But it was until he did a movie called Blade. Now that first Blade film is perfect because you have... The daughter of Bruce Lee in that movie, Shannon Lee. And that very first movie was groundbreaking because Marvel took a big, huge financial risk with Wesley Snipes and it was a big payoff because you got a franchise out of it. You got three films and a television series. And now you're getting a reboot of Blade. Now it's unfortunate he won't be coming back as the main character, but he did three films. It did spin off a short-lived television series, but it also got people wanting to take martial art classes. After people saw Blade 1, Blade 2, a lot of black men got into the martial arts. Somewhere in the near future, I'll probably make a YouTube video called The Top 10 African Americans Who Do Martial Arts. And don't be surprised if Wesley Snipes comes at number one or number two on that list. But if it weren't for Wesley Snipes, I don't think you'll get too many guys doing martial arts. Yes, Michael J. White did Spawn, but Blade got more of the respect and more of the credit where it wasn't until later in Michael John White's career that they saw he could do the same thing as Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes were doing it in movies before he was picked to play Blade. And even after he did the three films, he still shows elements of Blade and all these other films that are not Blade. So the sword fighting, the speaking the multiple languages, you know, the the way he displays martial arts, the way he gets in athletic shape, all of that is Wesley Snipes before he was picked to play Blade. 
you know, how many actors you know can play a comic book character in other films before they actually played a comic book character. Alright, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles versus Shredder. Now, you got four Ninja Turtles fighting Shredder. Shredder is a samurai, and they took the concept of a ninja versus a samurai. And in that first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle film in the late 80s, it was a big time to be a Ninja Turtle fan. Everybody had their favorite Ninja Turtle. Either you were one of the Ninja Turtles or one of the villains. Raphael was the leader of the Ninja... Um, not the leader. He was the Alpha Ninja Turtle. Michelangelo was the goofy, fun, energetic, full-of-life Ninja Turtle. Always wanting to have fun on a skateboard. Donatello was the highly intellectual, logical Ninja Turtle... Because he always thought about math and science, night and day, numbers, the probabilities of consequences of your action. That's how smart Donatello was. So Donatello clearly reminds you of someone in high school and college striving for excellence. Where they're not good with physical attributes, they're good with their mind. That's what Donatello was. Raphael was physical. Donatello remind you of somebody who played basketball or football, but was very physical and was not that smart, but was good at watching and observing, so that made him the alpha Ninja Turtle. Michelangelo was kind of like, he has potential to one day be better, but he likes to have fun, and you're not sure if he's serious, and when he is serious, he does it in a funny way. So some people like the fact they took some comedy for Michelangelo's character. Leonardo is the more straightforward, serious, logical, fearless leader Ninja Turtle. Because his whole approach was be more serious, be focused, be ready, and take life serious and prepare for the unexpected. So everybody understood the purposes of the Ninja Turtles. Shredder was this guy that was in his 50s. That had years of experience in combat. And they took it into the 20th century. Instead of fighting normal common criminals. You're fighting a samurai. So they took the philosophy and the principle of the ninja. And then you take the metaphor of a samurai. And you get this masterpiece. The first film was very good. The second film doesn't really quite do that. Neither does the third film or the reboot. But that first Ninja Turtle film. It was dark. And you had lots of elements from the ninja and the samurai. The fact, here's this one guy that's in his 50s kicking all four Ninja Turtles ass. And the way he embodied the samurai was badass. Like, he did not believe in any bullshit nonsense whatsoever. He had a philosophy. He stood by it. And to only be defeated by Master Splinter was a representation of the master versus the student. The student wants to be the teacher, but in order for the student to become the teacher, he has to beat the teacher, and the teacher beats the student. Shredder, even though he beat the Ninja Turtles, he still was a student. And Master Splinter embody what a teacher is. Like, you look at basketball or football, your coach would probably be the equivalent to a martial arts teacher. With that principle... You got to know when to do something when it's necessary, not because you see the opportunity to do harmful things. All right. And then number five will be Ryzen versus Tiki Sashiki from the movie Ninja Assassin. This was a very well good movie franchise. I believe that this had a lot of potential. Um, it's unfortunate that the movie got three films, but what hurt this movie franchise moving forward was the fact that people never got to see, um, never got to see the actor come back for the second and third film because he was a pop singer. And when I read in the men's fitness magazine, he basically explained why he was in athletic shape and why he never came back for the second and third film because there was a legal dispute back in his country that was preventing him for doing the second and third film. So when he got recast, people kind of lost faith in the second and third film because they wanted the actor from the first film. He's someone that could have been Liu Kang if you were to reboot Mortal Kombat. If you were going to do Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Tekken, 
if you were going to do Street Fighter, he would be the guy you would get because he 